Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Cat's Track. Thank you for subscribing, liking, and sharing this with your friends. Today's episode is the first episode of our new series called What's Cool in the Caribbean. Today, we're with our friend, Charlie Kirkano. Charlie is a Caymanian. <laughs> Say it, Charlie. Caymanian. Caymanian, thank you. <laughs> However, was born in Kingston, Jamaica. His father was a sea captain and was living in Jamaica when he was born, and they moved back to the Cayman when he was two years old. Charlie has a daughter, Leah, Leela, who is a swimmer, and his son, Jack, is a footballer. Besides his loved ones, Charlie is passionate about building Cayman Enterprise City Project into a globally significant home for innovators and entrepreneurs. They want the CEC Special Economic Zones Project to be something that current and future generations of Caymanians can be proud of. And of course, he's extremely passionate about FC Barcelona. Friends, you'll find his full bio attached. Charlie, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, well, thank you very much for having me on. Oh, I'm glad you're here. I'm very excited about you joining us and then, of course, this series. And I'm very grateful. Thank you. Are you ready for the questions that we sent you? Sure. Why not? Excellent. All right. What's been your greatest challenge in the last several months, I guess, almost a year? Whew. Yeah, well, you know, it's been the same challenge that uh, it seems like the, the whole everyone everywhere is facing. And it's been, uh, of course, the virus. So, um, you know, while it's been a challenge, you know, our, our government has done um, an excellent job in, you know, with, with how they've approached it. Um, and essentially, they've allowed the virus to burn out locally. Um, we got to a point uh, where we had uh, no active cases. And um, we, we're, we're back to having some, but those are people who are you know, returning to the islands from, from abroad and uh, you know, they're testing positive when they arrive. Um, you know, we do have a, a, a quarantine period when you do arrive. So that's obviously designed to prevent the, the virus from uh, you know, kind of, you know, getting into the, the, the local population. Um, but overall, uh, you know, the, the government has handled it very well, and we have a very, very low incidence of, of COVID. Um, but the reason why it presents a challenge for us, obviously, is that uh, as a business jurisdiction, um, it, it, it makes it difficult for people to come and go freely. So that, that has been a bit of an issue, um, and, uh, but we're working through it, and we're optimistic that, um, you know, the you know, with the, with the vaccine coming online, um, you know, for us in the early part of the new year, um, that things can start to return to normal. Um, but one thing I will say that there, there has been a unexpected uh, kind of positive for us has been that um, because the, uh, you know, because of the, the way that the government has handled the virus, uh, the, the, the demand for People, you know, from people wanting to actually relocate here and, and set up and run their business from here, uh, you know, people who are thinking about, you know, how can they move about freely on a day-to-day -day basis, um, you know, with, within the island, uh, we, we've seen an increased demand and, and, and an increased determination from people who uh, were previously interested as well um, for, for getting set up here. So, there's been, it's been a mixed bag, but I would say that more, more positives than negatives from, you know, because of the virus. Oh, that's good. I'm glad. And it seems to be across the board, there's more positive than negative. So of course it depends on the pocket that we're referring to and what that measure actually is, especially the negative. There's some very sad stories around the world, isn't there? Yeah. Oh, well, certainly. And we've been, we've been fortunate to, uh, you know, locally to, like I said, had such a low, incidents and um, you know even the even even the the version if you will of the virus that was circulating locally uh, you know, I'm told that the viral load was was quite low so you know people mo most people who acquired the virus um, were either uh, asymptomatic or um, had very very uh, slight uh, symptoms good that's awesome and what about the reasons why we would consider the Cayman well, you know, the, uh, you know, for many, many people, I guess, this time of year, uh, especially in Canada, you know, one of the things at the top of, of many people's agenda is that this is a, um, you know, warm and sunny uh, place year round. 
Um, so we, we don't always try to lead with that. But when we speak to people in very cold places, we, 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 do, <laughs> we do bring that up early, early on. Uh, and, uh, you, know, the, you know, to go with that, uh, you know, we, we offer Cayman is a great place to live and work. So in addition to, uh, you know, the, the, the very uh, amenable cli uh, climate, um, you know, there's a, there's a very high quality cosmopolitan um, island lifestyle available to people. So, um, you know, people who, who, who relocate to here, whether, um, you know, they bring their companies or they come here as, as an employee of, of a company, um, they find that they're not sacrificing, um, you know, to, to be here. In other words, um, you know, the great place to live and work also means that you can have a very, very serious career here um, and, uh, and, and you can run a very serious company from here. It's not all t-shirt shops and, uh, and uh, you know, tiki bars. Um, but from, from, the, uh, you know, from, the, from the business perspective, you know, why someone would, would locate here, um, the you know we, Cayman is a tax is a you know tax neutral jurisdiction, so you know businesses that are operating globally, of course, they're paying taxes wherever they're doing business, uh, but we Cayman doesn't tax them again. So uh, for many of our clients, they find that to be um, very very attractive, um, and the the other reasons relate to you know how quickly uh, you know you can you can get set up here because we we found that that is a very very um, important part of, uh, you know, from a business person's perspective, um, you know, they want to, people don't like to make a decision. And six months later, eight months later, they're calling up their lawyer and saying, you know, have we, have we managed to get through, through the, the setup process yet? And say, well, no, not yet. Still got a little ways to go. Um, you know, within the special economic zone, businesses can get set up with a genuine physical presence, uh, business licensing um, and work visas included within about four to six weeks. Uh, four weeks if you're in a, in a, in a real hurry, uh, six weeks is, is kind of quote unquote normal service. Um, within, within that, I uh, mentioned the, uh, the work visas and another very important issue for, for some of our clients is the, um, the ability to get work visas for, for people that they're bringing from, you know, potentially you know, around the world the ability for them to get those within uh, a, a very short period. And um, within, within the special economic zone, um, once your company is set up and operating and you're applying for additional um, work visas, those can be, those can, the grant the review period is um, five working days. So for people who are, you know, they wanna bring people and they wanna have the, the certainty of knowing that they're going to uh, be able to get the work visa for the person. Uh, I say that because we, we don't have any H-1B, I know that's a U.S. thing, but we don't have any H-1B uh, uh, style restrictions on, you know, who may be granted a work visa. They want to know that they can, can get it, get, uh, get work visas for the people that are important to their, to their project, and they want to know that they'll be able to get them within a, within a reasonably short period. And uh, the special economic zone accommodates both of those things. That's excellent. Do you mind if we dive a little deeper, Charlie? Yeah, no, please. So specifically, I, I've got two questions that will lead to other questions, but you'll probably be able to fill in the answers with the questions. So I'll start with, okay. let's pretend that I am a business owner. Well, I am a business owner here in Calgary. Let's say I want to expand or and or move to the Cayman. What are the steps that I would need to follow? And are you looking for specific criteria from me in terms of my education, how much money I have in the bank, how much I'm going to invest into your country? Um, what are some of the things that you're looking for uh, for someone like me with a small business that want to move? Okay, so I'll, I'll start from the very beginning about you know how 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 we uh, how we proceed when someone contacts us and says, "Hey, I'm I'm interested in setting up in in Cayman." So Thank the you. first thing that we do is we have a, a discussion about eligibility. Um, one of the restrictions within the special economic zone is that there is there is a limited scope to who can be licensed. We are a, a knowledge and technology focused special economic zone, so um, typically. 
uh, you know, anyone who's in the tech space is going to qualify without any issues. Um, in, in addition to, to tech, we also, uh, companies that are involved in commodities and derivatives trading, and also companies that are involved in um, aviation and maritime are eligible to set up in the zone. So the first thing that we do is that we just, we establish that the eligibility. Um, and then with that established, we move on to, you know, what sort of physical presence does your company need? And uh, we, coming on to your question about what we require of, of you, um, you know, the, there is no minimum uh, company size uh, or, or, you know, revenue size or any of that. Um, the co companies are small, you know, single, single person startups. Um, are, are welcome in, in the special economic zone as are, you know, global, uh, you know, billion dollar listed companies. And um, we actually do have a number of those. Um, one of them, a Canadian company uh, that you probably know very well um, and, and, and everything in between. So um, we work with people to figure out, you know, what is it that, that um, they need, that their company needs. And then we agree commercial terms for physical space in the special economic zone. And uh, we, we agree those, we enter into an agreement. And then we're, uh, we're, we help you with the applications that you need to make to the uh, special economic zones authority. So there's an application for a zone trade certificate. And, um, you know, so we, and we help you put that application together that gets submitted and processed in five working days. Um, in the meantime, we're working with you on your work visa applications. Those are called um, zone employment certificates in the special economic zone. So that as and when the trade certificate is issued, we can file your work visa applications the, that day. Um, and that helps to cut down the, the amount of time it takes from start to finish to get through the licensing process. And then once you have your uh, zone trade certificate, your zone employment certificates, um, we have been, in the meantime, working behind the scenes to get your office ready. And we typically offer our, um, our office solutions in a service to office environment, mm -hmm. uh, which for many of our clients, you know, the, the fact that that means that they don't have to do anything, um, that, that we, we, we basically take on the burden of getting the office completely set up and operational is, uh, is, is a very significant plus especially for um, you know, those of our clients who are, are doing this all remotely. Um, and you know, some of the things that we save, uh, save our clients from um, are you know, having to uh, you know, set up uh, you know, internet connectivity, uh, phone service, and all of those sorts of things. Um, you know, little things, but each one of them individually, you know, potentially a, a big hassle. Um, the fact that we take care of all of that for our clients means that they're just working on the applications, and then once they have the approvals that they need, they can literally walk into the uh, walk into the building the next day, sit down, and get to work. Um, and uh, you know that that's essentially how it all works in a nutshell. That's excellent. Um, two two more follow up questions. Um, so let's continue using my company CBI as an example. We actually do, I'm sitting on the board of a tech company. I service the tech companies here in Alberta by executive search. So as a professional service agent into the tech community, would I be considered or would I need to be like full-time in a tech company? Um, there is scope for uh, you know, businesses that are ancillary to the tech industry to be licensed into the zone. Um, we have to look at it on a case by case basis, but um, typically, you know, like a consultant, uh, you know, th there is scope for uh, consultants to the technology industry to be licensed into the zone. Um, but, but most of the time, um, you know, we, 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 well, all the time, we have to look at it on a case by case basis and make a determination. And that's part of the, the beginning of the, of the process of getting set up here. Is that we you know we have a we have a discussion with you on you know is is your company eligible? Understand. Okay, and then can you tell us a little bit more about I I, I hear your full service. You're able to it's basically turnkey for us to show up and get to work, which is exciting. Um, what is that a, a fee? That obviously it's fee for service. Is it a flat fee? Is it a percentage? 
How does that work? Well, we we offer our product basically on a, on, on a per head basis. And so, you know, what it costs for us to offer, um, you know, the, the, the full service setup to, uh, to our clients is, is typically driven, including the square footage that, they, that the company will need, is driven by how many people uh, that the company will have. So that, that's the driver. And um, again, we offer everything from a, you know, a seat uh, in an open plan environment all the way up to private lock, uh, lockable spaces from, of any size. And um, you know, we, we, we literally just do, we do it on a, on a case by case basis. And likely customized depending on the level of need and what they need, yeah. right? Okay, okay, yeah. excellent. Well, that's very exciting. I love it. And where would, okay, let's say I move, let's say I'm approved. Where would, where would my home be if my office is, let's say I'm in the bullpen and I'm with everybody else and I love it. So where, what's an ideal place to live? Would I be able to walk to work? Is it a commuting t- city or what is it? Um, well, right now we are operating from uh, temporary spaces in and around central Georgetown. And um, Georgetown is not uh, not built that way. Uh, the or not it's not a walkable city, oh. in, in other words. So people will live. I mean, nothing in Cayman is far. Don't get me wrong. Um, you know, I, I drive. Um, it takes me somewhere between twelve and fifteen minutes to to get to work every day. Oh, that's great. So it's not nothing. Nothing is far. But um, the we don't the, the, the way that the city is designed is not such that you can you know walk you know, li- live in the city and walk to your office um, you know the but that that is part of what is is coming for uh, the the main campus development that we're working on so uh, right now as I said we're in we're in temporary space which means that we uh, we le- we lease and then sublease. Uh, a physical office space in and around central Georgetown. But we have, we own a, uh, a 53 acre site, which is uh, located uh, just outside of Georgetown, about five minutes from, from the airport. And uh, that, that's going to be developed as a mixed use development. So the, the idea there um, that for people that would, you know, that they're interested in a mixed use walkable uh, development that's what we're going to offer ultimately. And uh, that part of our project is underway. And uh, we anticipate that we'll have our first commercial building uh, online within, uh, within the next 18 months or so. Wow, that's very exciting. And the affordability of that, what, what, is, um, what would a 1,100 square foot uh, two bedroom cost for rent and how much to buy? I have to be completely honest with you. I, I actually, I really don't know. The That's answer okay. To the so um, I'd, I'd love to, I'd love to, to provide you an answer, but unfortunately, the the way that we typically deal when we when you know when we meet with clients, this is part of the service that we offer. Um, you know what we will do is introduce them as early as they would like to a uh, local real estate agent, um, who will then work with them to find um, the ideal. Uh, you know, location and, uh, you know, level of, of accommodation that they're looking for. But awesome. unfortunately for me, I, 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 I'm, not, uh, I'm not up to speed on, on what cost, real estate costs are. I so, don't expect you to be. I should, have, I should have known the question in advance and let you know, but who knows with the, where these things go? I never know what I'm going to ask. <laughs> well, that's, that's no problem at all. One other final question. Um, is as a neutral zone for tax, obviously the the country needs to run and you need to have good roads, you need to have good schools. How do these things get paid for when the taxes aren't happening? Sure. Well, we, we Cayman has an indirect uh, taxation uh, scheme. So essentially, um, what where the government makes its revenue is on uh, uh, on import duties and and fees. So, um, you know, everything that is uh, imported to the islands is, uh, well, not everything, there are some exceptions, but the standard rate of uh, import duty is 22% of the, of the landed value of the item. So that generates a significant amount of revenue for the government. And then, uh, you know, government also makes, uh, makes, its, makes significant revenue from things like 
uh, stamp duty on the transfer of, uh, of real estate um, and business licensing, um, whether that be uh, you know licensing local business businesses that are operating locally, or um, you know licensing uh, things like um, you know you know mutual funds and and those sorts of things um, and uh, investment managers and and you know uh, businesses that are operating locally. So it, it's really a, a system of indirect taxation. Um, and it's consumption based, which we think is, uh, you know, part of what makes it very fair for everyone. Um, you, you pay based on, you pay your, your level of taxation is determined on, you know, how much you spend each year. Um, and the, the government, by the way, has uh, uh, another thing that it's been very successful in doing is, uh, is uh, you know, prior to the, the virus, which has depleted the surplus. Um, but the government was running a, a very healthy sur surplus year on year. Um, and we expect that when things return back to normal, um, you know, the fiscal responsibility and, um, you know, the, the revenue generation that comes through uh, the, indirect, uh, the indirect mechanism um, will, will take us back to, you know, running, ru running surpluses each year. Hmm. Very, very cool. Awesome. Well, that's all the questions I had from the business standpoint. I've got many, many more, but I don't, I know you've got a very busy timeline. I'm so grateful that you're able to join us. Do you have anything in closing for us, Charlie? Um, just that, you know, anybody who might be interested in speaking with us, uh, we, we would love to speak with you uh, about the possibility of, of getting set up here. Um, and it would be, you know, very, very excited for, for that opportunity to speak to you. Um, you can you know, visit us at our website, uh, www.caymanenterprisecity.com, um, and you know, the, you submit a, a form from the, from the website, and uh, we, will, we will be back in touch with you and start the conversation. That's awesome, Charlie. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with us today and for your time. I really appreciate it. All right. Thank you very much. I had a great time. Thank you. Many blessings to your family and have a wonderful 2021. I hope to look, I hope to chat with you again soon. Take care. Everyone, that was Charlie with the Cayman Enterprise City. Check it out. Wow. I'm definitely going to go check it out when I get down there and go visit when we're allowed to get on a plane again. I can't wait. Mm -hmm. Thanks again for joining us on Cat's Track. We'll see you next time. Have a great day.